Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be talking about the difference between commercial and consumer grade computers, specifically laptops and workstations, the things that typically cost your business the most money and have to be replaced uh, more often. So there's a, there's a big difference between the two and oftentimes when we get asked this, it's a new prospect or a company we're talking to about doing business with and they've been small and they bought computers like Best Buy or Walmart along the way and they now realize they're having problems with their systems and they need to have an IT company come in and, and like look at what's going on and try to fix all those things. And the first thing we do when we see them is we say, well, you can't have consumer grade computers. And they say, why can't we? They've worked fine. Well, you're having problems there. You've got to a size now where you need to have business class systems that are interconnected and work in a way that it allows your organization to both be secured and reliable. And when you're small, that's not really a big deal. You got a couple of computers, everyone knows everyone, you know how to share files, even if it means sneaker net. You know, you put it on a USB drive and you put your sneakers on, you walk it over and you hand it to someone, that works. But as you get bigger or you need to have more efficiency in your business, those consumer grade computers no longer are sufficient. So let me go through them uh, one at a time. We're gonna start with the commercial grade, why you should have commercial grade computers and what are the benefits. So the main benefit of a commercial grade computer is it comes with a Windows Professional operating system. So Windows Professional, you know, if you were to buy it today, it's probably about $200 to buy the operating system. So what companies will say to us is they'll say, well, I've got all these computers and maybe they're only six months old that I bought from Best Buy. I really hate to lose my investment. Can you install Windows 10 Pro on there? And the answer is absolutely, but you don't want me to. Because if it takes me an hour or two to install it on there, you might as well have bought another computer because the hardware is still not sufficient for what you should have. And that goes into point number two. Most consumer grade hardware does not have what uh, Dell calls a TPM chip. Other companies have different names for it. It's a tiny little place on the motherboard that stores encryption keys. Now, why does that matter? Well, a Windows 10 professional or Windows 11 professional operating system includes a software called BitLocker. BitLocker will encrypt your drive. <clears throat> now, why do you want to encrypt it? Well, you want to encrypt it so that if that computer gets lost, stolen, or whatever happens, you know, someone, you leave it in the back seat and a, someone smashes your window out and takes it, it means that nobody can take the data off that drive and read it. It renders it unrecoverable. So if you have a TPM chip on the motherboard, which is what's on most of your commercial grade computers, then you can store that, chip, that, that encryption key on the computer. And so if you detach that drive from the computer and you don't have a login to get into that computer, now no one can get into that data. And if we're talking about HIPAA, they call it a safe harbor. So even if you had all of your medical records in your entire organization stored on that laptop, if it's encrypted and it gets stolen out of the back of a doctor's uh, car, you don't have to report it to the Office of Civil Rights. It's a safe harbor. So, so that's one reason, the HIPAA compliance, but just in general security. Even if you take a computer and you give it to an employee that retires, which we've seen happen, they would take the desktop computer off the desk and they would just give it to the employee. Congratulations, you've retired here. Take your work computer home. We, we found out about that after the fact a while back. And we were like, oh, stop. You're a healthcare provider that had medical records on it. You can't do that. But it was encrypted. And because it was encrypted, we were able to, well, we remoted in, pulled the encryption key. They brought the computer in. We wiped it with a DOD level wipe, which is overriding it so many times to make the data on it unrecoverable. And then we reinstalled it and gave it to them. And they still got to have their computer and all their stuff that they wanted on it, but none of the electronic protected health information. All right. So being able to encrypt your devices, and I, I don't care what business you're in, you should have them encrypted. And if you're buying commercial grade equipment, there's no cost. That encryption is included in the operating system and it is uh, supported by the TPM chip that can store that. Now, what happens if you don't have a TPM chip? Well, that's awful. So what that means is now you've got to have you log into your computer. You also have to put in a passcode to get into your computer for the encryption. Now you've got two ways that you have to get into your computer. Well, that encryption key, you're going to write it down somewhere because it never changes. It's always the same unless you re-encrypt and it's going to, it's just going to get lost. and You're going to have problems. All right. The next thing you need is, or the next thing about commercial grade is they are built to a higher standard. They are more standardized. And the reason for that is if you're a big company uh, with 10,000 employees, you want to buy basically the, this one model of desktop that's your standard desktop. And it has these specs and these configurations. And you do not want that to change dramatically. Because if it changes dramatically, we do a thing called imaging. That's where we take and we build all the software we want to have on the computer. And we store that somewhere. So when the new computer come in, comes in, we can dump that image with all the software pre-configured, pre-installed on that computer ready to go. So companies like Dell, when they're, they have their... Uh, commercial grade or business class computers, 
they don't change the specs on those much. They will stay out there for three or four years even sometimes. Uh, they may put faster processors in and that are supported on that motherboard, but the motherboard and the architecture for the most part stay standard so that you can use your images over and over and over on that basically same model. So Dell might have a model called a, a 5090 and that 5090 is made and they have a bunch of configurations and upgrades you can do to it but the base motherboard and supportability of that system will accept that image that you built, okay? So that's another reason. Um, another reason on the standardization side is if I have a problem with a computer in a corporation and it's say a Dell 5090, that computer has been deployed to thousands of businesses all over the world. There's, there's probably millions of those devices out there. I can go and Google my problem, put in the model number of that exact computer, and more than likely someone has a solution out there on the internet that I can go find real quick. And, and I'll get into the consumer grade more later, but I'm gonna touch on it right here. Consumer grade computers do not stay with the same model. They will literally come out with a new model almost monthly because they're trying to keep up with whatever the latest trends are and they have no reason to keep the same model. Now they may reuse motherboards, they may change the look on the outside, they may change the color, they may change some chips on the motherboard. There's tons of stuff that they will do, but there's no guarantee you're getting the exact same configuration, even if it's the same model name, uh, three months later. So for businesses, that's, that's kind of a poison pill because you want to standardize. Standardization, is, you run a business, you know that standardization will save you time and money. All right. Um, so business computers typically don't come preloaded with a whole bunch of junkware. Uh, usually what's on them is they'll preload some antivirus like McAfee seems to be one that always is trying to get pushed onto them. Uh, you know, they'll say, do you want the free version or do you want the paid version or whatever when you buy it and it'll come preloaded. Uh, you know, you just uninstall that and install whatever real antivirus that you want to have out there. Uh, but not a lot of junkware. You know, back in the day, there was so much junkware preloaded on computers. It was just unbelievable. But business class computers have almost always been fairly clean when they're deployed. Uh, you will get the business class computer software like Dell has its own suite of software like Dell Backup, stuff like that. If you don't, if you're a small business and you don't want to re-image, you know, you just uninstall that software and you go to town. No problem. But it doesn't have a lot of bloatware. All right. That's a real plus because it can take a lot of time rooting out all that bloatware software that creates problems on your system. Um, they can be uh, pre-configured and imaged from the manufacturer. Like I'm going to use Dell as my example throughout this whole thing. Uh, HP's fine, Dell's fine, Lenovo has good stuff, except it's you know there, there's a whole story there. Um, <clears throat> but uh, so in in the, the world of Dell. Um, you can go and have them if you're, and you really only do this if you're a bigger company. I would say a thousand seats or more, uh, or maybe 500 seats or more, and you're you're having a lot of turnover. But they can preload pre an image for you on every computer you buy over a period of time. It's a service they offer, and it really is a time saver uh, for your team. Um, you do get greater performance and better architecture. So typically on business class computers, not all, but most, you will get a, a video card that's dedicated for video. You will get a, mem uh, your memory is dedicated to run the memory on your computer and a CPU. When you get into the consumer grade, and again, I'm gonna to touch on the consumer grade to, to contrast, that's not usually dedicated. You're using shared memory, actual RAM from your computer to run your video on the computer itself. And that can really uh, cause you some grief on performance when you're trying to do anything with video or, or streaming or conferencing or whatever you might need to do. Uh, next is warranty and support options not available on consumer devices. Uh, consumer devices will have warranties. You're going to have to deal with them. They're not going to talk to a third party. It's you might as well just say you don't have a warranty. You know, it's it's just not very good. Um, and you know, consumer grade stuff is is well, I'm sorry, uh, commercial grade stuff is you can buy a business class warranty. You can get next day support. You can even buy you know drop protection stuff like that, which I think you might be able to buy that on consumer grade. But I would certainly wouldn't want to have to be a home user or a business user using a home system, trying to go through the home support channels through Dell to try to get that resolved. Um, and then commercial stuff is not typically sold in retail stores. Larger cities might have a retail store that does sell business class computers. Uh, we're out here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I don't know of any retail stores that sell the business class computers around here. All right, so now let's jump to consumer grade PCs. Consumer grade PCs have Windows 10 or a Win Windows 11 home. They cannot be joined to a domain. So the business class with Windows 10 uh, and Windows 11 Professional can be joined to a domain. I think I may have glazed over that. What that gives you is centralized authentication, which is huge for any level of security. 
If you don't have centralized authentication, that means that your accounts are directly installed and configured on the, or not installed, but configured on the local computer, which means I have no way to go and disable access for a user if they're terminated without going to that computer and manually manipulating it. So it, it's a time saver for support. It's a, it's a security thing. You really need to have centralized authentication. And with Microsoft Azure combined with Office 365 now, everyone has the ability to have centralized authentication fairly cost effectively, if maybe even at no cost to your organization. All right, so Windows 10, Windows 11 Home cannot be joined to a domain. They are islands. Every computer is an island. They are not designed to be put in a business. They are not in any way supposed to be in a business. And you know, Microsoft, that's not their intent. Their intent is those are sold to individual users. They are not to be sold to business. And you will find more and more things that do not work on those like you want. Another thing about Windows uh, or consumer grade is they don't have that TPM chip I talked about earlier. The TPM chip where you can store the encryption key for things like or for BitLocker so that you don't have to put in your login and password and put in an encryption key. And most consumer grade stuff usually don't even have a login. Most of them, you turn them on, they just log right in. And that's completely against pretty much all regulation and all security uh, recommendations. And you have no way to centrally control that security. So I can't just go into a, a business, a small business that has a bunch of Microsoft Windows Home workstations, and I can't set one policy that enforces screen lock timer or enforces password policy. I don't have any centralized control over that. Um, so don't have a TPM chip, kind of come back to that. You don't have a TPM chip, so nowhere to store the BitLocker key, so no way to really securely uh, or to encrypt that system effectively, and certainly no way to uh, track that BitLocker key if you do encrypt it. If you did encrypt it, now you've got to put in your password, you've got to put in your key every time you log in, it's a pain in the butt, don't want to do that. They're also built to very low standards with an expected service life of less than about three years. Um, consumer grade stuff, they don't want those to last. They have no reason for those to last. You're not going to stop buying from Lenovo because your computer died in two and a half years. You're just gonna say that's how computers are and you go buy another one. Uh, they usually don't have solid state drives. Well, that's changed more now because solid state drive prices have gone down so much. So you do get solid state drives in consumer grade computers. Uh, occasionally you still see some spinning disks uh, and so you wanna avoid any of those. So. If you don't know what a solid state driver spinning disk is, feel free to reach out to me. I can help you with that in another uh, on, on the side. Okay, the, 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 my biggest frustration more than anything with consumer grade computers is that the models change almost daily. It is crazy how fast uh, companies like Lenovo specifically is really bad about this. Even they were really bad about this on their commercial grade servers for a while. And that's why we don't sell their servers is because they would change the server. Uh, we had a customer that had a Lenovo server whenever we started doing work for them that was not very old. And when they needed more drives, Lenovo didn't even make those drives anymore. Um, and that was, I think, about a year and a half later, they wanted to expand their array and there was no drives to be found. So, uh, so you want to be really careful about that. Uh, in a business, you want to be able to, to buy the same model and standardize. And, I, and you know, I will preach standardization day in and day out. It will be cheaper for you with in-house IT support if you have standards. It will be cheaper for you with third party if you have standards. Standardization of your systems builds reliability, uh, creates security, and keeps things uh, just a lot more, uh, just, a, just easier to manage. You know, from a guy who works in this stuff day in and day out, you just really want to standardize. Okay, so um, they do come typically preloaded pre with a lot of junkware, right? I mean, if, if you're a company that makes some kind of little software widget or something, you want to go partner with Dell and HP and you want that little widget or software on every computer they deploy. So you might give them a, a pay them a fee to have that preloaded on all the computers. And so you get all this preloaded software. When it comes preloaded, now your IT guy, your third party or your in-house person really needs to remove all that software and that takes time. And the removal of software on a Windows computer is never really a guarantee that you got rid of it. You really need to wipe that whole thing out, destroy every, all the data on the drive, reinstall the operating system without any junkware on it, configure it the way you want, and it's time consuming. It's, it's really the right way, if you're gonna do a consumer com great computer, that's the right way to do it, even though there's still no real right way to do it because you're still on a consumer grade computer with other limitations. All right, um, they tend to be very low performance, uh, even with the same specifications. If I buy a, a Core i7 processor, uh, from Intel-based desktop computer, and I have a uh, 16 gigs of RAM in that computer, that computer, Dell's uh, business class, commercial class, is uh, on the desktop, called an Optiplex. Their consumer grade is called a Vostro. 
or Vostro or however you want to say it. Those computers side by side performance tested will not test the same. The architecture is not the same. They are sharing memory. They're doing other things that make them not perform as well. And that has been proven time and time again. So um, you really need to buy, if you want performance and you want reliability, you got to buy the business class. All right. Limited warranty and support options. Uh, consumer grade, again, they don't really want you to have your third party IT company or IT person calling them to get support. They want you to. They want you to register. Uh, there's a lot of hoops you got to jump through. Uh, to be able to get support a lot more so than on a business class system. Then, you know, the plus side on consumer grade is you can find them anywhere. In the middle of COVID, when there was these massive shortages of technology, we found ourselves having to buy consumer grade systems to keep some of our clients going as they needed replacements and there was no manufacturing going on, nothing could be found anywhere. So we shopped around and we bought some computers at Best Buy and other places just to get people by for a while. And sure enough, as you'd expect, those computers failed just a few short years. Well, <laughs> they're failing now and they're being replaced. And that's good. We want to get those out. But it's it's bad because at that time, they really weren't any cheaper than the business class. When you talk about business class versus consumer grade, the price difference is really minimal. Now, if you get into the super low end, like the, the, the I don't even know how to explain it, but the super low end computers, yeah, you can buy a computer for three or $400. Yes, you can. But you can buy a business class computer for about $600 to $800 uh, that's going to do everything you need it to do with a clean environment, better, more supportability than that computer. And yes, it's a little more money, but it's money that's well spent. All right. So when we talk about brands, like I said, I was going to talk about uh, Dell as my example. So the brands to know, Dell Vostro is a consumer grade brand. Dell Optiplex is the uh, commercial grade brand on desktops. On the Dell side of laptops, you have the Dell Inspiron, which is the consumer grade. And then on the commercial side, you have the Dell Latitude. Now, Dell has other higher end stuff. They've got their Dell XPS, which in a lot of ways, the XPS, it's kind of their gaming and like Uber computers. Those are usually fine. Uh, they're usually just business class computers that are really beefed up. Uh, same with their gaming line of systems. A lot of those are very similar. They'll have a lot of the the, the business class features in them uh, because people are buying those per, for performance. And then they have their precision line, which is what you'd consider more the CAD line, computer aided design. Those are all great, but you're going to pay a premium for all those, the gaming systems, the CAD systems, and so on. You're going to pay quite a bit more for those. The average business should be buying Latitude laptops from Dell and buying Optiplex desktops from Dell configured. And my recommendation for the configuration on these is minimum of a core i5 from Intel, not an AMD chip. We have tried over and over to use AMD chips and we just don't have great success and performance uh, with them uh, at all. Uh, it should be a core i5 Intel processor. It should be 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, I mean, if you look at the RAM requirements for your software like uh, QuickBooks or Sage or whatever, you'll usually find out they want eight gigs of RAM just to run their software. So, so as you total up all that, that memory utilization, 16 gigs of RAM is pretty cheap these days and you're gonna get a lot better performance if you start to multitask and do a lot of things, okay? So Core i5, 16 gigs of RAM, and we really recommend, if you can find them, is 500 gig or larger SSD drives. And the reason we do that, uh, just a few short years ago, we didn't do that. But we do it now because everyone has really started to figure out that OneDrive and SharePoint is actually stable and reliable, and most people are moving over to that instead of putting their files on a file server in-house. So when you do OneDrive and SharePoint, they give you one terabyte of storage per employee. So what that means is, is you could be syncing a terabyte to the cloud and only have 256 or 128 gigs of local storage. And so you can run out of space that way. Now there are settings to deal with that where it will remove files that have been cached over time and they just stay in the cloud and you re-download them and you wanna work on them. And we turn those features on. So we feel like with those features on, with a 500 gig drive, you've got enough room to do whatever you want. I don't care if you're doing CAD or anything else, you can have your files locally cached on your computer from SharePoint or OneDrive, and they, you can work on them, and then they will clear out if you don't use them for a while, and then you can re-download them. By clearing out, it just removes the local copy. You still have the one in the cloud, and when you go to click on that file, it will download it back to your computer, and you can work on it. So that's, that is the longest short video I've ever done on this, but it hopefully helps you understand why commercial grade is so important over consumer grade. It is not your IT company or your in-house guy just simply wanting you to buy something expensive. There is real reasons why you buy consumer grade. 
And sometimes on the spot when people ask us this, I can hit three or four of them. Well, this covers everything I think that is important uh, so that you'll have that information. You're armed with it as you go forward. And if you are an IT professional, feel free to share this with your organization uh, as kind of making the case for why they should have commercial grade. Because it can be difficult at times to explain this to other people. That's all I've got. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks.